Hey there, it's Boots Owen here. I've got five electric showers in front of me, all salvaged and one hot water heater. Going from oldest, I think, I don't know which ones of these are older and younger than each other, to a newer one. We just want to have a look inside them and see what see what they're like. So this is a Gainsborough style 400 shower. Big clunky buttons on it and a knob. Inside, and the wires are attached to it. Okay, inside. As with all electric showers, we've got power coming in over here. And this one, it seems to have relatively thin cables. It looks like 4 mil coming in, but I guess that's what the electrician's done. Figured that out. You've got water coming in somewhere over here, I guess. Yeah, it's broken off on this one. That's where the water would come in. So it would come in on the side there. A little valve, a little flow regulator. Going into this element here. Can we get a year on this one? I don't see a year on the sticker. It's just got something over here. 24691. It doesn't look like a year either. Or over here. I can't tell how old this one is. Oh, maybe we will. No, it's just a load of test details, test results for the thing. That sticker there might have had a year on it, but there's nothing left on that now. Okay, so this is a 7 kilowatt shower, so that, yeah, that's a, you tend to be a bit higher than that now, 8.5 or up. But look at it, we've got a brazed on joint on the bottom for the shower head, shower hose. Water comes in here into this little element. We've got a two element boiler, so you've got hot and, hot and hotter or uh, low and high or something like that. You've got your temperature switch here. That's about it. You've got some other switches here micro switches, I guess they're low pressure or high pressure, some kind of a diaphragm there onto the flow regulator. And then you've got some, there the switches that were on the front are just rocker switches if you see in there. It's just a regular rocker, nothing too complicated. So that was the Gainsborough Style 400. Then this one, the Gainsborough Energy 2000X. And you'll notice from here on, these are all two knobs. They've got number settings, low, medium, high, stop, and then the temperature range, you've got power which is one dot or two dots stop and a temperature range you've got low medium high a temperature range and you've got cold economy and high and a stop and then one to ten again so inside this Gainsborough over here as before you've got the water coming in here a little uh, valve little what are they called Electromagnetic valve, that's not a solenoid valve, that's what they are. Flow regulator here, water comes into the element, must go up around or something inside and then out again. Plastic bottom this time. Can I get a year on this one? I don't see any stickers on this one at all. 9709, isn't that's 1997, so it's 2018 now, it's a 21 year old electric shower. Little lights here for indicators. And what's this thing up here? That's your switching arrangement. That's just a switch block there. So that has your low, medium, and high on it and whatnot. Sends the power to the various elements. N none of these showers are pumped, so they're all just uh, pressure flow, mains pressure flowing. Bit of rust here. I'm not sure what that's for, but I think it's just a little tab to hold it on there. That's some kind of a, a label down here. Let's get this cover off. Product code, serial number, 2000X, doesn't say what year it is. So then, yeah, again, a copper boiler on this one. Going over to the Neptune Solo. So we're moving to plastic boilers, I think. Let's see what's over here. And we're back to copper on that one. This is a Neptune Showers, Neptune Solo. And Neptune's not a name that I know or I've ever heard of before, but it says Neptune Showers, Neptune Showers. It's not made by anyone else. Tewksbury and Gloucester is where it's made. And we've moved on from black and red cables to blue and brown. Although we'll have a combination on this one over here. Uh, plastic boiler, so water comes in over here. Solenoid, flow regulator, uh, switch to switch on the various settings. And then a plastic element this time. Well, no, a plastic tub for the element. The element itself up on top is still copper. Power coming in. 
they're all the same, all these electric showers, there's not much to them. So this one here is a Essentials, and I think that was made by Myra, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's where I spotted Myra. The neon PCB assembly. So I think this one, this one here is older than this one, because it's a mixture of red and this kind of brownie color. But it also does have blue and brown, so it's like they were working on the blue and brown. It's uh, an Essentials. I suppose you call it nine, nine and a half kilowatts. It has a serial number but not a model number. Did it have a model number at all? I don't see one. What was I looking for? Oh yeah, Kohler Myra Limited, that's the other one. So this one's made in Cheltenham. And this one over here is made in Tewkesbury. So they're both made down in Gloucester. GL52 postcode. So power comes in. And water comes in. This time it's got a flexi hose attached, but the water really comes in up here at the top. Because over here to where there is no solenoid valve this time, it's got some kind of a solid valve, I guess, actuated off this switch. Which is, yeah, different to the rest of them, because they all have solenoid valves so far. And then the water comes over to this flow regulator, it goes into a copper cylinder again this time. So it's basically a tiny immersion heater. Water comes in, there's elements in there. This one, yeah, there's two elements because there's four outlets. And then comes out brass again this time. So this one's kind of, I would say this is a good quality. Uh, the Meyer, even though it's an Essentials, uh, you know, which would be like their cheapo brand, it's still, you know, well-made brass and copper, I would say, rather than plastic. Not that there's anything wrong with plastic, but it's more likely, plastic's more likely to break off here than, you know, a brass thing that's got little screws held on and all. So that was the Myra Essentials. And then here, the last one I've got is Triton Cara, which is a kind of a modern one. Inside, it's got a bit of dirt on it, but it's the same thing. Now this one, I found a year code on. I think it's 315, so that would be March of 2015, so that makes it three years old. Now why this one had been removed, I don't know, but it has. This is a Triton, so I think Triton and Myra are pretty much the same thing. Well, I'm not gonna, somebody can tell me if that is so. This one's made in Nuneaton in Warwickshire, so it's definitely not made in the same factory, although that's a long time ago, that one there, that essentials. So anyways, water comes in here, solenoid valve, flow regulator, um, there's a pressure switch there, I think, or something like that, or I'll turn this around, it doesn't seem to do anything, so that must be some kind of a pressure, I presume, uh, low flow pressure thing. Get copper top but a plastic bottom same as the other plastic ones and not much to it plastic outlet really really yeah not much to it quite a neat little this. I might keep this one just in case another just in case thing but just because it's all there really just needs a shower hose and the screws are missing but that I can deal with that yeah 315 again on that and so then this hand wash one is this one loose. Yep, there's the front of this. This is a Triton hand wash, that's the name on it. T30. T30i model. So, water comes in, marked as inlet, bit of copper pipe still on this one. There's a flow regulator, and then it's just a single element, copper top, plastic bottom, little unit. And on this one, the outlet's broken. That's what I said about the plastic outlets, you know, they can snap. Now you could get a part for this, it's not the full piece, so you wouldn't ruin the whole element. I presume you can get a part for that, just screw it off and put it on, but, well, this one's knackered anyways. This is just on a bit of flex, so I'm presuming that's two and a half mil flex. Because you just fit this up over a sink and have a little kind of a spout going side to side on this kind of thing. Three kilowatts, so that means you can run it on a standard plug in the UK. So you could, you could just have this as a fused connection. You shouldn't really have it on a plug, but you could have it as a fused a fused connection. And is there any switches on this one? No, it just has a switch, so there must be yeah, there's a micro switch for the start. And once it's gone, once it's clicked on, then the power comes through it and whatnot. So you need to be sure you've turned these off because otherwise the flow stops and they overheat. I did a red ring shower video a while ago and I thought it was absolute crap, that red ring, but there you go. Um, yeah, check out that video. It'll be somewhere in my showers videos. But I just wanted to show you, you know, kind of different eras of these electric showers. What's kind of scary and cool about all of them is, for instance, over in this Essentials one, you've got 
11 kilowatts or so coming in here. I don't know what this one is, nine and a half kilowatts, which is, you know, pretty high. It's three times, four times the power that's coming through a plug, a normal, you know, plug that you'd have a stereo or a kettle on. Got all that electricity coming in here, going to here, and it's insulated from here, which is the copper that's touching the water, by, you know, that little tiny bit of rubber, rubberized plasticky material there that I'm touching with my fingernail. If anything was to leak, you'd get water all over it. And it seems really dangerous, you know, to the untrained individual. But in reality, water and electricity are, are kind of okay if they if they get together. This one's IP34, which is, you know, quite a low rating, if you see it down there. You know, IP88 would be quite high, completely sealed, but you know, you're not gonna get that in something that's for use indoors. But still, it's gonna have, you know, someone standing under a jet of water. Albeit they won't be earthed, but you know, the pipe work could be earthed or something like that. So you could hold the pipe, maybe you wouldn't get electrocuted if you're holding onto the bath taps, if you're having a bath over shower, shower over bath kind of arrangement. I, I just sometimes wonder about these things. They're, you know, not dangerous by themselves. We're allowed to sell them, but you've got a lot of electricity near a lot of water that you're standing under. Seems counterintuitive to me. They're all the same, you know, that electricity is on top of the copper boiler in this one. I guess in some of them there's less chance of the water getting out, but you know, things leak. Washing machines leak, these things leak, but you're not necessarily standing under it if it leaks normally. So anyways, let's just a look inside some showers, Triton, Myra, and Neptune, never heard of them. And what's the other one? Gainsborough, I've heard of them before. So yeah, um, just something you might find interesting. And if you do, give it a thumbs up and thanks for watching. See you later.